Hi folks, let's go over the cam for the A-Bomb 79 parking attachment. Here's our part, and we've got all these operations listed here. Now here's the thing, I love cam, and that's sort of the computer side of me. I really enjoy it, uh, and that's what it is. A lot of, you know, I'm gonna spend, you know, five or eight times more time at the computer doing a part like this than I am at the machine. Um, I'm thinking we may have some viewers that are watching this that maybe Adam referred over that are newer to CAM. So I want to quickly explain, you know, Adam had a part in mind and we did some CAD videos creating the model of that part. So CAD is literally where you're just creating the sort of architecture or design of that part. Fusion 360 also includes what's called CAM. CAM is where we take that part you know, this guy right here, and we start telling it what tools we've got on our machine and what we want to do with those tools. So end mills, drills, etc. You can do this um, pr pretty quickly. And I wanna emphasize that off the bat because I think some people think, oh, I'll never learn CNC because CAM is too hard. It's, it's, it's not. That's something we do in our Fusion Friday series. It's something we cover in our CNC training classes that we offer here in Zanesville, Ohio. Um, one of the things I also want to mention is we just showed templates. You can save a lot of your preset cam stuff and, and it'll really uh, save you a lot of time and avoid having to remember some of the details because cam can be simple. You can also spend a lot of time, you know, nailing down those really fine little details. I really enjoy it. Let's take a quick walk through here. We're starting with a, a chunk of material. I'll, we'll walk through this quickly and then I'll come back and we'll do a little bit more in-depth dive. But the, the order operation, face it off. You can see the blue line is our tool path here. Rough out the rough shape down so far. I'll come back to that. Spot, drill out with a 3 8 inch drill through these two holes. Widen those out to a half inch drill. Clean up this little shelf down here. Clean up the two contours right here. You again, see the blue line do a 3D tool path with a ball end mill to create this final smooth tapered finish. And then we'll do the finish roughing uh, of most of the part. We're gonna be holding it with a set of jaws that'll come right up to here uh, on the part. So that's why we're only going down so far. Then we'll rough out the pocket here to, uh, it's gotta be reamed. So we're gonna try something that I'm not sure is gonna work. Um, and my backup plan, if it really goofs, is we will over drill it and we'll press in a shaft or, or a piece of um, drill bushing or something. But we're going to try roughing it out with a roughing end mill and then going to a, a reamer from that roughed uh, you know, material. I, I think it'll work. I've never tried it before. I should, you know what, I should probably try a test piece. That would be smart. And then finally, we'll use a ball end mill to, to create this 10 degree internal taper. So the really nice thing about CNC is obviously some of these things like this tool path in here or doing this parallel operation, we can use relatively smaller or less rigid or lower um, you know, capability machines. You know, this isn't like the K&T that Adam's got where you could take a big form tool and take out huge cuts in one fell swoop, but um, it's pr pretty cool. So. That's the rough overview. We then will post this code out onto, I put it onto a thumbstick um, and walk over to the machine and that'll be the fun part, which we'll have probably next week to show on video. For those that wanna see some of the real nitty gritty, uh, the first thing we're gonna do is actually define our stock. So the piece of material that I bought is 2.5 inches square. And in this setup file here, if you edit it, and the second tab here is stock, we actually have modeled our stock, which is really cool. You can see it as the yellow sort of tinted object here. It's, we'll saw cut it seven and a half inches long and it's two and a half inches square. So we've got um, a little bit extra on the bottom here. You can see if we zoom in, we're, we're leaving ourselves just a hair on the top to clean up that cold rolled uh, top. And we've got a pretty good amount on our sides here. As you can see, the X is here and here. What's cool about CAM is because we model that stock, it actually knows what it needs to do for certain things called like adaptive toolpaths, where it's actually taking, see if we click this one, see those little 
swoopy curves is an algorithm in the cam engine. So cool, it maintains a constant chip load. So you're never gonna dive into corners or overload the machine, which obviously saves tool deflection, breaking a tool, over horsepowering the machine, you know, an optimal sort of production type tool cut. Uh, I wouldn't call this a production part at all. Um, and so that's what we're doing here after we, I'm oh, sorry, we face it off just to get a clean top. And then we're gonna use this Lakeshore carbide, half inch, four flute carbide uh, end mill. It's actually a finished end mill, but it's a lot shorter than the other one, which we're gonna use, which I'll come back to in a second, but this long guy. And we're gonna do that to get rid of the first sort of inch or so of material around the part. And we're gonna use it to rough out what I call the kind of stair step uh, of this angle here. So again, awesome thing about cam, if I click on setup and I go to simulate, I can actually watch what's gonna happen at the machine. So this might sound crazy to some of you, but I've never single blocked a program in my life. Um, I, I really trust the simulation. I watch the simulation a lot. I'm at the machine, I'm ready to hit stop. Um, but simulations are awesome. So it faced it off and here's that adaptive strategy with our first tool which is getting rid of the lot, most of the material on the first inch. It's all the deeper that tool can go. And you can see it's making a few hop arounds there and so forth. You can go a little faster here. Okay, oop. This is where I wanted to end up. So you can see that flat end mill is leaving what I call these stair steps. Next up, now that I've got this sort of face here exposed, we will spot each of those holes. And actually, I think I gotta check, make sure, yeah, we're okay. Make sure that's, um, you wanna be careful when you spot that you aren't spotting an air, nor are you spotting into a, really deep into the part, which would cause a crash. Uh, and then I'm gonna drill with a 3 8 inch drill first, um, and then come and do a half inch. I'm pretty sure we could, in fact, I am sure we could do it with a half inch at first, and maybe I will, but big twist drills take a lot of horsepower, to be honest with you. Half inch isn't as bad, but three quarter, one inch, a lot of power. So I'm making one of these. I'm not too worried about the extra, click on machining time, one minute and 30 seconds it's gonna take to do a three eighth inch first and then a um, half inch, so no big deal. Horizontal, this is where we're getting a little bit more advanced cam, but the horizontal strategy comes in and it takes a look and it sees that we've got a little bit left of cleanup to do on this face here. So why do we have anything to clean up? When well, we did this adaptive strategy up here, that's not a finishing strategy, never a finishing strategy because it's meant to focus on material removal. So if I go and edit this, I'll show you guys under passes, this is a really important tab in Fusion 360 Cam. There's this stock to leave. So we're leaving 20 thousandths around the whole part. So that's about five sheets of printer paper thickness. So not much at all, but enough that um, you know this, the tools that we're using, it's not gonna be the final service finish. Um, what that also means is because we're using a half inch tool, it can't get into the nooks and crannies right here. So that's why we're coming back with this quarter inch tool and just cleaning up those we can watch a simulation without the stock just to show you what that does. It's pretty cool. Like so. Same sort of process here to clean up those two contours. And then this is awesome. This is where we're gonna switch over to a ball end mill and machine this flat area. Let's go and watch that as a simulation and you can see exactly what's going to happen on the machine. So it's gonna get to that point, it's gonna have that material, get rid of the tool pass here. That's what it's gonna look like. And if we start watching it, you can see it just go, and the color's changing as it's cutting with this new tool. Now, simulation isn't perfect when it comes to like understanding what the surface finish is going to look like, although you can see a little bit of that ripple effect um, but simulation is more to understand your tool pass and not, again, for perfection. But you can also do some quick math or, or just an experience thing where 
with a half inch end mill here, I'm stepping over 50 thousandths of an inch. So that'll help you understand the curve that'll be left. If we wanna do this a little bit better, actually one of the things I'll do is just take a look. Machining time, this right now is four minutes. Four minutes is like nothing for a 3D tool path. So if we double that precision uh, or step over by going, excuse me, have it to go twice as precise, or excuse me, um, sm smaller step over to get a better service finish, it'll double the time, eight minutes, fine. That should be a pretty darn good tool path. And then lastly, um, I wanted to cut as much of this as I could in this first <clears throat> setup. So this is the Lakeshore Carbide War Mill, inspired by my buddy James at War Machine, made by Lakeshore Carbide. It's a half inch rougher, but the area from here to here is necked down. So this is a 1.3 inch length of cut, but it's a 2.52 inch reach. So we're gonna be able to machine most of this part in the first setup, which is awesome. So that's what these two adaptive strategies come to. We'll get to the feeds and speeds. We'll post them in our little banners in both inch and metric when we're running the part. Um, then we're gonna try that adaptive in this hole here, again, as the sort of pre-ream. And then finally, the contour that cleans up the taper inside of there, just to show you how I picked it. Um, I did a chain here so you've got to tell it where are we trying to work right now i picked this chain that you can see well you can see it right there and then what i did that would have um let it work on the whole model let's actually i'll show you click okay probably can see it here yeah so it's, it sees that area and it thinks that okay i've got all this other other eligible space to work but i added this little avoid touch surfaces click that and said touch, and I think that was all I had to do. So that's one of those examples where you can get, um, I don't wanna say it's complicated, but there's a lot of little nuances to getting into advanced cam type stuff. What we'll then do is take the part out, flip it over. We will, I'll probably ream it by hand in the bridge port. I gotta think about that. Uh, I wanna have a feel for that, how that's gonna work. And then we will um, we'll have a good hole to locate off of, so that's obviously really important that we can flip it and have a good, because um, when our part is done, which I'll show you, it's gonna look like that. So the top most will be done, but we'll still have this green shelf at the bottom. That's obviously gotta go. But by reaming this hole here that you see in the yellow, we'll have a precise way to locate that center. We can rough off the rest of that material clean up the bottom taper. Again, great example. That's a 45 degree angle. So you could use a 45 degree tool um, and, you know, on a manual machine with a rotary table, but that's a lot more power. I'm gonna interpolate it with a ball end mill. We'll see how it looks. And then just do that contour right here. Um, I actually, Adam just posted his SNS show, showing the part, which is my first time to see the part uh, a little bit more closely. So I think this shoe part down here may have changed a little. I may have to tweak that. Um, and then we don't have it modeled yet, but what we'll do is we will put this on a quick, just not, a, I don't wanna call it a fixture plate, just a piece of aluminum with a couple of holes in it that will let us hold it down through these two through holes here. And that'll give us full access to this profile of the part. And then we'll come through with a three quarter inch uh, solid carbide four flute finish end mill and we'll take a few uh, profile passes to clean that part up. I really want it to have a nice surface finish uh, and with that all I've got to do is flip it on its side and drill this uh, cross hole. I think that's it. So that's the cam for this part in a quick overview. If you guys want to see more of this or any specific stuff on cam let us know. We What we do is we make the cam file and the part available to folks that support our channel on Patreon. So if you're interested in doing that, it's as little as a buck a month and you can walk through this all yourself. Uh, otherwise, folks, thanks for watching. Take care. See you soon.